Hello and welcome back to Family Law Assistance. My name is Michaela Wade and I'm the founder of Family Law Assistance. We help you represent yourself in court. Most people are perfectly able to do this and we are here to help you through the minefield that is family court. Now, you may, you, you may have seen, you may have seen that I've just come back from Dubai. I spent an amazing couple of weeks, but here's the thing. I grew up in the Middle East and I have been haggling and watching my family haggle my entire life. So for me, going to the Middle East kind of was a bit like coming home to me. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about how to negotiate your way to success, particularly in the courtroom. Now, one of the things that really stood out for me when I was in Dubai was <laughs> I was haggling over a piece of jewellery. And when the thing that you've got, there's, there's kind of rules that are only specific, I'd say, to the Middle East because it's all a bit theatrical. So the first thing I used to, I would do is I remember walking into this jewellery shop and just kind of looking around and paying no particular interest. I just um denied, didn't show any face at all of what I was interested in because I knew the minute I did, that sales assistant would have been on me like a car bonnet. So having wandered around and just looking at what I fancied, what I didn't, what was around, what wasn't, I finally found the piece that I particularly fancied. Quite small, a little petite, it was just perfect. Now inside, inside my heart was going and inside, if you to sort of open my head and look inside my head, I was honestly hyperventilating. But outside, I was cool, calm and collected. I was cool as a cucumber. I knew I really wanted this piece. Um, it was just it was just the thing that would have been added to my collection. Sales assistant comes over <laughs> straight away. I acknowledge he acknowledges me. I acknowledge him. And we start having a conversation about nothing really in particular, you know, uh, uh, how was COVID, how was business? I mean, it'd been, don't forget, it'd been 20 odd years since I'd been back um, to Dubai. So knowing, knowing that there's been this passage of time, we just struck a conversation up. Then I started talking about the piece that I really liked. And we had this kind of I speak. So I sort of casually pointed to what I fancied. He took he took the piece out. I had a look at it. We um denied about it. You know, I, I pontificate or at least I appear to pontificate as that was what I really wanted. We still had that chat. We were still laughing and we were still joking about the weather, about uh, his family, about my family, just anything really. And just sharing a bit of a joke and a bit of a laugh. At this point, then, I sort of said, right, I really would like this piece. And I asked the inevitable question, how much was it? And that, at that point, that's when the dramatics really started. And I knew this routine. <clears throat> I've seen this routine played out since I was a little girl. He gets his big, big calculation. If any of you have sort of been over to the Middle East and seen or whether you're, whether that's your background anyway, you can't do any negotiations in the Middle East unless you've got a big ass calculator. The bigger the buttons, I swear to God, the more important they feel that they are. So the big calculator comes out. He gets out his weighing scales, weighs the, weighs the gold. It wasn't that big, but weighs the gold. And then you can see him kind of umming and gnawing. And then you can see him punching some figures into this big ass calculator. And, and writing some figures down. Now, as it happens, he wrote the figures down in Arabic. And my listen, my Arabic's not brilliant at all, but I kind of knew what figures that he was writing down. The grain, the grand great reveal was he turned the calculator around and presented the price to me. Now, of course, my initial reaction was to go, pff, pff, what's that about? I knew I wasn't paying that price because here's the thing. This was just his opening bid. Now we were playing. Now we were in negotiations. Now we were in the world of haggling. And I'd seen this played out a bajillion times before. And it's always been done with a smile. We were still chatting and laughing and having a joke at this point. But when I looked at the calculator, I sort of laughed it off and I said, the inevitable question, the, the inevitable words that would have to fall out of my mouth, is that your best price? And now we play. He punched some more figures and he wrote some figures down in Arabic. Um, he punched more figures into the calculator. He sort of huffed and puffed and made a great big song and dance about huffing and puffing. And uh, then he says to me, he presents me then with a the calculator. He said, well, how much do you want to pay? 
Well, I've been doing this um, a, a, a huge amount of time. So I punched in a figure that I knew, I knew was arrogant. I knew was cheeky. Uh, and I knew that he'd laugh at me for, and he did. He looked at me like, Pfft. and that took us then to the next round because then he punches some more figures in. I punched some more figures in. I sort of said to him, Pfft, it's not worth this. He says it's worth that. Um, and eventually, eventually after, I don't know, maybe about 10, 20 minutes, we come to a figure and he put the final figure in. He'd given it to me. I said, tell you what, tell you what, if we do this, we've got a deal. And he kind of looked at me, folded his arms. And he went. So have you ever been in court on your own? Have you ever wondered how on earth do you get what you want? Here's the thing. Most people will agree especially in court on big picture stuff. So whether you're going through finances or whether you're going through child contact issues, it doesn't matter. If you start opening negotiations by having a statement that everybody's going to agree on, for example, we're here for the best interests of the child. I mean, who's going to disagree on that, right? People disagree on the detailed stuff. So if you're going into court and, you, and you've got your paperwork there and saying, well, I don't see, I don't see little John as much as I, I want to. But you know what? I don't want 3.30 pickup. Actually, quarter to four would be a lot better for me. People will disagree on that detail. Well, no, actually, I think it should be 3.25. And immediately you're going to find yourself falling out a lot. People agree on the big picture stuff, whether it's finances, whether it's a divorce, you know, Pick something and start your, your opening gambit off with just something that people are going to agree on. Relationships, and yes, I'm talking specifically about court. Relationships are hugely important. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, hugely important. Because guess what? Being nice to people, having a laugh, sharing, having things in common is going to get you far more than if you're horrible. There's that famous saying, you're going to get much more with honey than you are with vinegar. And it's absolutely true. When I'm going to in-person hearings, I make a special note to make a friends with all of the staff. Because trust me, when you need a photocopier because you've forgotten to print your position statement, you know who you are, then you're going to need the court staff to kind of help run around after you and just perhaps pull a favour. But you're not going to do that if you're kind of angsty and angry. I get it. People in court are full of emotions, negative emotions, anxiety, anger, frustration, you name it. You've been there. But the ends justify the means. Right. So by being nice and making friends and building that relationship with everybody is huge. And I'm not just going to limit that to court staff. I'm talking about the solicitor. Yes, I know. The solicitor for the other side, the person that in your head you've just automatically caricaturized as Cruella de Vil. Very often when I go to court and I'm having to look for people on the other side, I'll always say, so what does he or she look like? And when people say, well, she's the miserable cow in the corner, doesn't really help me. Having a relationship with the other side solicitors, newsflash, solicitors are just human. They don't actually care. You care because it's your children, it's your life. They don't care. So they, I remember once going to a court hearing and the solicitor for the other side, I shit you not, was coloring in a calendar. Oh yes, this person had been paid 250 pounds an hour plus fat to color in a calendar. Pink for mum, blue for dad. And she was coloring in the contact weekends on one of those Google calendars that you can print out. <sighs> Money for all room. She didn't care. She didn't care that she, she was sat there for three hours coloring in the calendar. And funnily enough, when, when we were talking to her, um, <laughs> I remember the same to her, we, we were having a chat and I said, you know, have you got kids? She went, oh God, no, I wouldn't have kids. I've been, I've been doing family law for far too long to want children. I don't know, I kind of felt sad for her really because it was just a job to her. And in fact, so much so that she kind of was turned off of even having a family of her own. I'm now going to say something that's going to boil your piss. <laughs> Build a relationship up with the ex. I know they won't talk to me. They're abusive. But 
if you're building up some kind of relationship, being nice for the sake of being nice, you are going to get far further. And even if you don't mean it, in court, you, you, you at least pretend to mean it. You build that relationship up because that provides the basis for negotiation. That provides a little bit of goodwill. So how are we going to get what we want? How, how actually do you do it? Well, you know what? Having a little bit of arrogance when you're asking for you want, that little bit of cheek, that little bit of brass neck is fundamental in pushing what you want. If I'd have just agreed to the first price that um, the guy in the, in the shop had presented to me on his big calculator, oh, sure, he would have done particularly well out of it. Wouldn't have been so great on my pocket, but he'd have done amazingly well. I asked for a price that I knew, I knew that he'd kind of laugh at. And that's the same in court. Always kind of edge your bets. Now, that's not to say to be ridiculously unreasonable. You, I, I've done lives about this before when you need your sanity check, your support, your squad, your team around you to give you that sanity check, to make you know what's doable and what's no, not doable. So when I say I put a figure in that was ridiculous, I knew he'd laugh at it, but it wasn't absolutely beyond the realms of possibility. So having a little bit of arrogance in your negotiations is fundamental. I've already talked about relationships and how important they are. I can't emphasize this enough because building a relationship up with whomever, whether you're in court or whether you're in general life, it's always really good to make sure that you have those networking and relationships built up. Don't underestimate how much humour can go a long, long way. Very often, especially in court, when things are very tough, where, then, where emotions are very, very high, sometimes a little bit of humour just breaks down the barrier. It just makes people a bit more human. It's all too easy to characterise the other side, their representatives, as some kind of cartoon characters. They're not. And sometimes having that little bit of humour is just the perfect thing. I remember once going into court and uh, <laughs> it's childish, isn't it? But somebody had farted. Somebody had farted actually in the waiting room and everyone else in the waiting room was being terribly British and not and just pretending it didn't happen. And I was with my client and they were super nervous, anxious, angry, upset, ugh, all of those, the kaleidoscope of emotions that you experience when you go into court. And I remember commenting about the fart Everybody just burst into laughter, including my client. And it, not only did their, their anxiety go from fifth gear to first gear, but actually what we didn't realise at the time, so it was a, a happy coincidence, was that the other side solicitor was happening to be sitting in the same room. We hadn't been introduced at this point. So there was automatically the humour, because she was laughing as well, had broken it down to the fact that, well, we can have a laugh and we can have a joke about it. People are human. Listen, I really can't underestimate that. And I mean, really listen. In that scenario that I keep painting, I had to listen to what he was saying. He was actually giving me a lot of information to go on. He was telling me the cost of gold. I knew enough Arabic to know what figures that he was writing and potentially what they referred to. He talked about the workmanship. He talked about how, what it did to make them. He talked about how much gold was in this thing. I actually had a lot of information. I used that information as my bargaining tools. I mean, at the end, I was taken upstairs and I was shown the, the workroom. So listen, and I mean, really listen. I'll often say you've got two ears and one mouth for a reason. When people talk, they're giving you information, use it. And finally, compromise. Very often people, especially in court, get stuck in their camps. Person A is in their camp, person B is in their camp. And then you've got this whole bunch of nomads land where legal professional people like me have to try and navigate. And what you often find is when you're in front of a court, be it magistrates, be it a, a judge, sometimes you're going to get an order where maybe none of you might like. Learning to compromise is massive. Does it matter, for example, whether you're picking up little Johnny at quarter to four or half past three? Does it really matter whether you can make up the holidays at some other point? Whatever it is for you, whatever compromise means to you. And listen, you might need some help in getting that compromise. I often spend a lot of my time trying to uh, 
talk to my clients, say, well, if you do this, you do this. If you do that, you might get this. It's all a little bit about give and take. Very often in court, and, I, and this goes for whether you've got a judge or magistrates making the decisions for you, um, you'll probably end up with something that neither of you like. So get some control about that. If you are the one that's doing the compromising, if you are the one that's giving and taking. And I listen, I understand that compromise is not the same as rolling over. I just want to put that out there. Know, know your limits, know your bottom line. I've talked about this before. When I'm haggling, I know my bottom line. But that doesn't mean to say that I can't negotiate. It doesn't mean to say that I can't compromise. It doesn't mean to say I can do a little bit of give and take. So what if you could rock up to court and have a plan? What if you feel much more comfortable and confident in talking to the other side and actually getting what you want? What if you could perhaps go a bit, a bit above and beyond and talk to the ex and negotiate without even having the need for court? What if? When the guy presented the calculator to me and presented the final price, I knew we struck a deal. And he gave me that look. I had the final word. And he was the seller, so he kind of knew that I was going to have the final word. And that's how this played out. I put the final price in and he agreed it. And after that, it wasn't just about the fact that we'd made a deal. After that, uh, he put in some Arabic coffee. He brought in some water. He'd taken me up to see the workshop upstairs to see how the piece of jewellery that I'd haggled for was actually made. I met the team. It was an experience. When people are in sales or when people are negotiating or people are haggling in whatever scenario that might be, whether it's in court or whether it's in day to day life. Having that experience from start to finish actually made the whole thing really, really pleasurable. I wasn't just buying a piece of jewellery. It was much more than that. And you know what? I got his card and I'll be definitely going back there again when I inevitably go back to to Dubai. Guys, I hope you found that super useful. If you're going through any um, issues related to family court, we've got a huge team all across the country that are ready, willing, caring, strong and determined to help take your call. If you've got any issues, let me know. Hoot and holler at me. We're here to help. Guys, have an amazing rest of your day. Over and out.